A strong understanding of tithing and deep Christian roots have guided the philanthropy of a well-known Michigan family. Richard DeVos made billions of dollars after co-founding what became the world's largest direct selling company, Amway, in 1959. The DeVos family has donated tens of millions of dollars to education, health and community services, faith-based organizations and arts and culture. His son, Doug DeVos, has continued this philanthropy. He and his wife have concentrated donations locally in the Grand Rapids, Michigan area, including academic camps for children, safe havens for domestic violence victims, and Habitat for Humanity. We recently spoke about his family's legacy of giving. Doug, it's great to be here with you at the Napa Institute Principled Entrepreneurship Conference. And obviously you're known as a great entrepreneur and your family, you come from a legacy of entrepreneurs. So thank you so much for being here with us. Well, it's an, it's an honor to be at the part of this conference and to have a chance to talk to you. Let's talk about what philanthropy actually can do. <laughs> like I mentioned, you come from a line of community builders. Right. How did you take that on? How, how was that passed on to you through your family? Well, it, it was a it was a tradition that uh, that my parents had, and that they talked about a lot. So very early on in the marriage of my my mother and father, uh, you know, before they were successful in any level, there was a decision to tithe, and and that was what was going to happen. And they told us that story often about that was their decision, that was an expression of their faith, whatever wealth or success they had, they they were going to do that. And then over the years, they became very blessed to continue to do that at, at higher and higher levels, uh, and with greater activity and with greater you know, levels of engagement in the community uh, because they had the capacity and the ability uh, to do that. And so that sort of uh, value that that it's more than tradition because it was it was who they were. It was an expression of their belief system mm -hmm. and, and they engaged us in it and they they were deliberate in wanting to pass that value down and express to us why they gave. Um, it wasn't out of guilt, it wasn't out of some negative sense, it was out of celebration for God's gift to them, and they felt that that was their stewardship responsibility to engage in the community. So they began to work a lot uh, in those areas, and that's kind of how uh, that tradition has happened for, for uh, our family and a lot of us in the, in the Grand Rapids, Michigan area. You talk about engagement, it's not just cutting checks. There's so much more to it than that. It, it can be cutting checks, but I think there's a lot more to it than that because <laughs> it's people. And, and and what you're trying to do is walk with somebody. It, it, you know, at, at a certain level, okay, it's a basic need, it's a meal, it's something like that. But beyond that, you're trying to create opportunity for somebody who uh, who who isn't being served in, in, in potentially a traditional way. Somebody who's who's who didn't have a, a mom and dad who helped them, who didn't have you know access to you know to you know to, to, to people or to uh, uh, to services to to give them an opportunity to move forward so what you're trying to do is kind of fill a gap that mm -hmm. that maybe somebody missed and that's personal and, and so you got to try to find a way to do that now you do it through charities and you do it through organizations but you need to have an idea of, of who you're working with and why you're doing what you're doing and and then try to connect the dots at the end to say are we doing it? Yeah. <laughs> you know, because there's a lot of philanthropy that can have a negative result. It can create dependency. It can create you know other sorts of circumstances where 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 people don't you know where you're not grabbing hands and helping each other, yeah. uh, and, and so you got to be careful. And so that's what we're trying. And, and it's hard. And, and so we're we're spending a lot of time you know, in in our work trying to think through that. What are the right results? How do we do this effectively? How do we do it so it really helps somebody? How do we do it in a manner consistent where where we believe in them? Consistent. That they are values. special, unique, valuable people. People, they're just in a tough spot right now and we're gonna we're, we're gonna try to have a relationship where we can move through that to get to a better place we, we've kind of made a decision that we're gonna do a majority of our work locally mm. and we're gonna invest in you know uh, in, in more of the local community in a variety of ways as I said through business investment uh, as well as philanthrop uh, philanthropy and, and so uh, the further you get away from that the harder it is to be personally engaged mm -hmm. and, and so we wanted to be personally engaged and so to do that you need to stay a little closer to home. Pope Francis talks a lot about multi-generational engagement yeah. and you described that a little bit um, earlier talking about your parents, talking sure. about legacy and that your identity and your faith come from knowing what your parents taught you and what your community 
taught you. How has multi-generational engagement, not engaging in the throwaway culture of, I'm going to put my parents away somewhere, yeah. how has that affected you and your life? Well, again, it's what, you know, it's what my folks taught uh, us. And it's everything, you know, spending time with our family, with our kids, with my nieces and nephews, with, you know, w with younger people uh, when you can. I may not understand what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get the, the phrases of the words that they use. In fact, I often don't. Um, I wouldn't recommend them. Yeah, but there's a, but there's a, there's a few points of connection with, with, my ki with, with our kids and their friends and, and, and those sorts of things. But we have worked very diligently as a family so if you kind of bring it into the family unit mm -hmm. context, we have worked very diligently about transitioning those values and, and talking about, you know, where, you know, where my parents got their values from their parents and how that was passed down, what they, how they expressed their beliefs mm -hmm. and how we're trying to express our beliefs and, and how we, we hope and we trust they will, you know, see as a great way for them to express, you know, their beliefs and, and that they'll share the belief and value system that, and, and the faith that, that we have uh, grown up with in our family. But that's not gonna happen just out of the blue. It's gonna happen because you're gonna have diligent conversations, you're gonna have specific times where you talk about these things, you're gonna write about it, you're gonna put it on the table, you're gonna debate it in certain instances or certain cases. Um, but at the end, I can't live my kid's life. And, and so they're gonna have to make their decision. But I've gotta do the work that I can to at least prepare them uh, and, and offer a pathway for them uh, so they can make a good decision. I'm so grateful for the time with you. Thank you so much, Doug. Good. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.